Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how the Inception top works. If you remember Inception, he carries around a top like this and he checks if he's in someone else's dream by the fact that if it's someone else's dream, the top will keep spinning and never fall. So let's give ours a try. It's kind of getting wobbly, it should tip over about now. But, it keeps spinning. Oh no. In fact, this will keep spinning for hours on end. I've never seen it stop on its own. The only way you can stop it is by knocking it over and then it stops. But as soon as you spin it, it just keeps spinning on its own. It doesn't stop. You can see if I use my vacuum chamber box to spin this on, there's nothing underneath it that's spinning it. You can even give it a little nudge. It'll still keep spinning. So we have two conclusions that we can make here. The first is that we're living in a dream and this is showing me that I'm in a dream and I should try to get out of it somehow. But the second is that maybe there's some other way to spin this internally without having some external thing spinning it. In order to give something angular momentum, you have to apply a torque to it. And a torque just means pushing on something at some fixed distance. For example, in order to get this ball to roll about the center here, I have to push on it with some radius away from the center. So I can push on it at some distance away from the center and it will roll. Now let's break open our inception top and see what could be applying external torque. So the way that it turns on is it has this centrifugal switch here. You can see that this pin here needs to touch the side metal part. If you actually break apart this plastic piece, you'll see that inside is a pretty simple mechanism. Let me show you what happens when I plug this in. You can see this is just vibrating like crazy. So what this is, it's just an unbalanced motor in here. So it's weighted on one side, spinning around in a circle. If I start to break this open, we can see what's inside of this. What we have inside of here is just a little tiny electric motor, but it's weighted on only one side of it. So as this spun around in a circle, it was uneven, so it caused it to wiggle back and forth. But how does this unevenly weighted motor actually cause it to spin in a circle? Well, let me show you a larger version of this. I have a sphere here, and inside of it, I have a spinning motor. So you can see that it's weighted on one side of it, so it's really uneven. It kind of just wiggles around in your hand. So it's not spinning, but watch what happens when I let it go. It's actually spinning really fast now. So where's the external torque coming from to get this to be spinning? You can see that the way that this rolls is it's off-center. So if I have it up like this, the weight's at the top and it wants to roll to the bottom. So the motor puts in some energy to lift it to the top like this and it can fall down and roll. In order to keep rolling though, it has to be able to lift that mass slightly up. And in order to lift up, I have to be holding the ball still. So in order for this to work, I have to be able to hold the outer ball in place in order for the motor to climb up a little bit so that it can fall back down and cause this to roll. So it's actually the resistance to it spinning that's causing it to be able to spin. So the water is actually applying torque to the ball and that's causing it to roll. And that's the same thing with my inception top here. Once I start it spinning, it's actually the table itself that's pushing off of it to get it to keep spinning. To prove that the table is actually applying torque to it, you can see what happens when I spin a top on a rotating disc. The disc actually rotates in the opposite direction. We can see in this experiment that angular momentum truly is always conserved, even in a spinning top that seems to spin on its own. But here's the weird thing. If you remember the planet that we're currently on Earth, and also the Sun, and also the galaxy that we're in, are spinning around in circles. So they have some large angular momentum that's causing them to rotate. It's easy to understand how things could start rotating in empty space. You just need two large bodies coming at each other from different directions, and if they get near each other and get attracted by gravity, it'll cause them to start spinning around in a circle. But because angular momentum is always conserved, we should see that if we added up all the angular momentum of all the galaxies in the entire universe, 
they should equal zero, meaning that there should be about equal number of galaxies spinning in the right-hand revolution versus the left-hand revolution. But the weird thing is some researchers from the University of Michigan actually looked at 15,000 galaxies around us in the universe. And what they found is that there's not an equal amount of galaxies spinning in the right-hand direction versus the left-hand direction. They found that there's actually 7% more galaxies in the left-hand direction. Now this is really surprising because what that means is that the universe was actually born with some angular momentum. Something started it spinning from the very start, and the only way to start something spinning is to apply an external torque to it. But how did something apply external torque to the universe if there's nothing outside of the universe? So what do you think? Perhaps we are just living in a dream. And thanks again for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And also check out theactionlab.com where I sell some experiment boxes. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.